Welcome to the podcast, Nikki. We are so lucky to have you, and I can tell already this is going to be an amazing conversation. Thanks, Lynn said. I'm so excited to be here. So before we dive in to some really good tips that you have for patients and for especially for parents, can we start off with a very brief explanation of what is myofunctional therapy? Yeah, that's probably the most common question that I get. So people really don't understand. So really, it's just the training of the muscles of the head and neck to support the harmony of the function of um, the mouth and face. So really, it's more like a physical therapy where I'm helping and training muscles to work w well, but it's not physical therapy. So it's quite simply, it's just um, supporting better nasal breathing, um, with the proper tongue posture and lip posture and swallow. And what kind of practitioners can provide myofunctional therapy? This seems like a very specialized training. So are there a lot of providers or is this more of a unique niche that requires additional education? It is. So typically, my, you'll find myofunctional therapists are dental hygienists, speech language pathologists, and um, every once in a while, a dentist. So we have the knowledge of the head and neck intricately so that... Um, just goes beyond that knowledge. Yeah, I love my I love talking to myofunctional therapists because it is such a unique part of the body that not very many people know a lot about. And it's something that we rely on so much from everything from our speech to swallowing um, to function. Yeah, I just I just think that, you know, if I have one wish for healthcare, I think that everybody should be assessed routinely by a physical therapist, by an occupational therapist, by a myofunctional therapist. I would love to see these things incorporated in just our annual wellness visits. Because throughout our whole life, I think we can benefit from knowing, you know, what we're doing really well and maybe what actually could use help because nobody's ever trained us on these things before. So uh, my next question, thank you. That's super helpful. So that kind of leads me into another question for you. You know, if a patient needs myofunctional therapy, what does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis, especially for crazy, busy, you know, family life that we have nowadays? That's just it. So what, so funny that you asked because my first class, the instructor had us doing 12 exercises and an additional breathing exercise that was taking up a lot of time. And so because now I've taken so many programs, I really have customized my treatment plans for my patients because everyone is so busy, um, especially the families of multiple children, multiple sports. So really on a day-to-day -day basis, I try to um, steer it down to very very customized treatment plans. So just the muscles and the exercises that I need to work with um, and their issues in trying to um, accomplish improvements with their chief complaint. So the exercises look like five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. And then I always have a passive exercise that they can do anytime, anywhere to start building awareness and making better habits um, with some of the skills that they're gaining from Mayo. Um, alongside of that. So really that becomes four exercises um, that they're doing daily, three, twice a day, one, once a day, anytime, anywhere. The, um, in addition, a lot of my patients have breathing issues. So I will throw in some um, buteco breathing and some other breathing exercises. And depending on how severe their, their need is, you know, if I had somebody with asthma, asthma or COPD or long COVID, they might be doing those breathing exercises more frequently. Someone who's just trying to support better sleep and better airway, we'll do it a couple of times a day um, and also teach them nasal cleansing with it as well. Um, and better habits with that. Um, but yeah, so it's really much more manageable for busy families. And I find sometimes the timing of Mayo has to be right. Um, we're interviewing each other when we do our assessments. We, we want to make sure that we're setting them up su for success. You know, if a family is going through a divorce and they have kids that are in 18 different sports, you know, we might want to pause and make sure we're doing it at the right time so that they have the time to put into it because they get out of it what they put in it. Yeah. So it, knowing that myofunctional therapy can play a, such a critical role in function and sleep and breathing, by what age should we start looking for issues in children? And you know, how do we know that children might have issues? What are some common red flags and what age should we start looking for these issues? 
That's another great one. So kids, you know, actually have 80% of their jaw growth is completed by age six and 90% wow, of it, six? it is and 90% by the age eight to 10. And a lot of traditional dentists and orthodontists will recommend starting that expansion process when the sec when the permanent molars come in, the second permanent molars come in and really we've missed out on a huge amount of growth when most of the facial growth is done. So we really recommend seeing during pregnancy, seeing the mom and, and, and talking to mom or when the baby's born, if they're having issues with feeding or colicky, um, just not just not or failure to thrive, you know, let's look underneath the tongue and make sure that they don't have a tongue tie. If um, a, a small kiddo is a, excuse me, I have a dry throat. If um, a small kiddo is having some speech issues, you know, do they need to see the speech language pathologist? Is it a myofunctional disorder? Um, there's so much that we can do to intervene for proper facial growth and airway growth. Um, um, at Sear Sleep Airway and Wellness, we actually have appliances for kids as young as six months old to help that jaw growth. And so it's just amazing what all we can do these days, but not everyone knows about it. So um, I believe strongly that early intervention um, is the key. We want to try to help spot the smoke before the flame even erupts, because once the flame erupts, we can be talking sleep apnea, TMJ issues, heart, hypertension, um, all kinds of things. But we can actually spot the smoke way before if we can just intervene early. So this theory that watch and wait and see or that things are going to get better on their own is really uh, management by neglect, right? Uh, my previous podcast uh, guest yes. said that I thought that that was pretty brilliant. Would you review those ages for growth for me again? Because I think I interrupted you. I was so blown away by your statistics. Can you go um, through those, the percent of growth in the ages again? Absolutely. So by age six, 80% of the jaw growth is complete. And by um, eight to 10, 90% is grown, is complete. So, and then the other um, interesting statistic is that the adult like swallow is usually developed by age three. So we're all born with an infantile swallow so we can extract milk from the breast or feed correctly, but we reverse this swallow into the adult like swallow pattern by age three. So there's really so much that we can do, um, you know, with every age and stage. So ideally those birth to six, right? That's our main window and the earlier, the better. Um, so Absolutely. for our listeners that are with us today, can you walk us through any helpful uh, myo exercises or activities? Yeah, so today we were kind of um, kind of focusing on the pediatric patients. And so really one of the very first things I do with all my patients of every age and stage is make sure that they can breathe through the nose. And the common complaint I see with parents of young kids is they can't get their child to even blow the nose. Um, that might be someone who is just chronically sick and they're just so stuffed up and there's so much pressure. They don't want mom or to mess with the nose. So I like to play with kids, uh, keep it fun. So we, what we can do is I'll teach the parent how to play a game so they can set up a little uh, start line and a finish line on a, on a table or a coffee table so they can get at their level and play with them and have them blow the cotton ball across the finish line only using the nose. So if you're having a child not um, having a difficult time blowing the cotton roll or a pom-pom across the to the finish line, you can always put like a piece of paper or a clipboard or something in front of the mouth underneath the nose so that um, that takes the mouth out of it so that they learn how to keep the lips closed, breathe through the nose to push that um, little cotton ball or pom-pom across the race line. And then once they get better at that, they can use a finger to block one side and have a race with the, uh, just one nostril. Well, that helps unblock the nose. So the child doesn't even know it, but by alternating sides that you're blocking the nose, you're actually unblocking the nose. So it's really fun and it's easy. Once I get the parent having success with that game and it starts to be, lose its um, 
pleasure, I always have them play, um, put a little boogie in it. So what we do is we dangle a little tissue in front of the nose. It's almost like a little ghost. And so just like the dad joke, you know, got to put a little boogie in it. Well, let's see if we can make them do the, 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 the ghost um, dance. So cover up their lips or lightly pinch the lips closed and see if they can blow the tissue, make the little ghost dance. So once they can do that, usually we can start getting them to blow their nose with a tissue. And there's lots of YouTube videos that I'll encourage if parents are still struggling with that skill. Um, there's lots of YouTube videos of watching kids do it. And sometimes, unfortunately, we might even need to do a little sinus rinse. And so that's where YouTube videos of watching other kids their age do it successfully and see that it's not a big deal. They might lose that fear and uh, get a little more comfortable with it. And you always want to just play with them and praise them. So keep it fun. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions as far as good nasal rinses for our, our listeners? Oh, uh, you know, my go-to is um, clear, but it's actually spe spelled X-L-E-A-R. Um, it's all natural ingredients and it has xylitol in it, which helps um, block, unblock the nasal passages and the sinuses. And it's all natural ingredients that are non-addictive and um, just a wonderful product that doesn't have a bad aftertaste, especially if you're using it with the kiddos. Um, they have a pediatric version of it and you have an adult version. Um, one great tool, trick that not everyone knows when you're using those, those nasal sprays is you don't wanna go directly up into the nose, like you're gonna shoot it up to the ceiling. You actually wanna go back almost, you're gonna, like you're gonna go back to the back of the head and angle it away from the septum, which is the center divide. So it's almost at an angle where it's kind of going out to your ear or the corner of your eye, and you'll find better success with that. So great, great, great product. Yeah, so if, if we know that, you know, the, the growth and development of our mm -hmm. muscles and our face and our tongue and our nose and all this plays such a key role in how we function the rest of our life. We know that these problems from birth on can later, you know, manifest in mouth breathing and sleep apnea and things like that. And, and we know that early intervention is best, but just to be clear, myofunctional therapy is also used in adults, correct? Throughout the whole entire lifespan? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So half of my patients are adults and half are peds. Um, so definitely it's never too late to correct these, these um, improper uses of muscle. So I, I support um, orthodontic treatment so we don't have the tongue thrust swallow pattern and having the teeth relapse. Um, I support sleep apnea. I help support sleep, better sleep. Um, I had a patient recently who she hadn't been diagnosed with um, a facial paralysis, but she kept having to use Botox in her lips because one of the corners of her mouth wouldn't raise. Well, through myofunctional therapy alone, we were able to get her off of her chronic Botox use so that she would have, you know, equality to her movement of her lips. So, you know, I'm not saying that I can eliminate plastic <laughs> surgeries and Botox on everybody, but just getting the muscles to work equally and um, doing something, exercises as simple as twice a day, um, really, really helped her. And also I've had um, athletes that was, I had a collegiate athlete recently who what, the, his doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. He saw a cardiologist, a neurologist, and he couldn't even run half a mile. And he went to, to um, a nice, pristine college just to run. And it was just so sad. And it, we're not sure if it was a long COVID or what it was, but between Sear Smiles um, growth appliance, he did have a sinus surgery and myofunctional therapy. Um, yeah, he's He's won, um, oh gosh, Western regionals and he's running 68 miles now. So a week. So it's just incredible what, it, what we can do. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I hate to put you on the yeah. spot, but can I all already <laughs> invite you to come back where we can specifically talk about <laughs> TM, where we can talk about TMJ? Cause I know you are an expert in that field. And I think that's a huge opportunity for people struggling, you know, with TMJ, TMD, um, myofunctional therapy is a great tool for that as well. Correct. 
Absolutely. Yeah. That's kind of where my journey started with this is that I am a TMJ patient, but I go all the way back to the kiddo um, ages. I, I sucked my thumb. I wasn't breastfed and I uh, was chronically sick and had strep throat all the time. And it turned into TMJ for me. And so I worked for a dentist who had great success treating the TMJ patients, but we had one missing piece, which was the airway. So myofunctional therapy is working with the muscles, but I also look at the airway. I can help TMJ patients. And uh, yeah, and a lot of those TMJ patients, this doesn't sound, this may sound strange to the um, listeners, but a lot of the TMJ patients will also have chronic digestive issues. So um, just getting the correct tongue posture and swallow um, with the, the proper use of the muscles can help correct that too. So it is fun. It's just oh. every day is so fun. And absolutely, I'd love to come back. Okay, that we are going to maybe have you back a couple times to go through more specific pediatric information with the ages and stages and then um, getting you back to talk about digestive issues, getting you back to talk about TMJ. Um, you are probably going to be our new best friend. <laughs> All right. So, so obviously you're super knowledgeable. You're super passionate. You know, that being said, where do you envision healthcare going in the years to come or what do you wish for or wish or wish that would change in our modern healthcare system? You know, I just wish that, I mean, the dental hygienist that I have practiced, I wish we were taught to look for these tongue ties so that we can help these parents, even the pregnant patients, and let them know that if their little one is having difficulty nursing, have somebody look under the tongue. Um, if you have a colicky baby, have them look under the tongue. If they're having speech issues or growth, failure to grow, you know, we need to look at the airway. We need to look underneath the tongue. And I wish um, all professions would kind of blend the medical and the dental and work together to help um, nip it in the bud before it's a problem. Um, so my dream is just yeah, to see them. I like that. I like your... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like yep. your, Everyone um, um, you know, the smoke before the flame. <laughs> yes. That's my go-to, okay. my go-to so quote. Bef <laughs> Before we sign off, what are one or two things that listeners can start to do immediately to improve their health or breathing or sleep? Um, that's great. That's a great one. So, you know, since we're trying to gear today to pediatrics and kiddos, I'd say let's play, make a game out of it. So with your kiddo, you can have play, let's make a smelly test, um, have them close their eyes and try to figure out what the food scent is. Is it an orange? Is it a pickle? Is it a tuna? You know, a can of tuna is a banana just to get them using their nose and making games out of it makes it fun. Um, if you have somebody in the house that chronically has their mouth open and the way you can tell, cause a lot of parents don't can't tell until they really start looking for it but watch them on the tablet watch them on the tv is their mouth hanging open adults will hide it and you'll they're only have their lips parted just a couple millimeters but kids they'll be gaping you can see it so come up with a code word have the kid come up with a code word uh, mine is bunny nose because i think of a bunny scrunching its nose and wiggling its nose but i've had kids na name it after their favorite lego cat character before or you know a stop sign and every time they see a stop sign they know oh i gotta keep close my lips so that mom doesn't have to be naggy. Uh, we have enough battles. We don't need to make them more. So keeping it fun. So those are some easy things that you can start with your kids. Oh, thank you so much, Nikki. You're amazing. Thank you for your time today. I just want to remind you all that Nikki does provide in-person and telehealth services for people in Reno, Nevada, and across the entire globe. She can be found Monday through Thursday at the Sierra Sleep Airway and Wellness Center in Reno, Nevada, and on Fridays at Mountain Myology. You can know more at, uh, find out more by going to the website, www.sierrasleepwell.com. If you go to Mountain Myo, Nikki has an amazing website with a very robust library of videos videos for education, hundreds of research articles. She's one of the smartest people I know. Uh, she is encouraging everyone to get screened for sleep apnea, know your numbers, seek out resources for sleep coaching, habit elimination, um, for things like thumb sucking or nail biting. And she is always here to help you. Anything else before we sign off, Nikki? Tongue up, lips closed, healthy breathing through the nose. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.